You can think of cryo as the entity that actually starts the container processes. Its aim is to be boring. When you use it, you shouldn't be thinking about your container runtime. It just works for you. One of the big goals when we were first designing cryo was to make sure that it lined up perfectly with the release of Kubernetes. And a goal we had is to uh, get OpenShift uh, working on top of cryo, like switching the container runtime. This is like saying, OK, we have a car in production, right? say a, a Ferrari and you decide, oh, we're going to change the engine uh, in the next season and you have a year to to basically design a new engine and make it work. So it, it was interesting and fun. It was it was like a startup. Cryo was born in the Kubernetes incubator in 2016 when there wanted to be a pluggable architecture for like a implementation of a runtime for Kubernetes. So at the beginning, it was Docker and then Rocket came along. The upstream Kubernetes community suddenly had, you know, sort of two paths to running containers. And it really became sort of convoluted code. So the Kubernetes upstream community decided to change the, the way it worked, figuring there was going to be more people coming into them eventually and saying they wanted to run containers with Kubernetes or different types of containers with Kubernetes. And so they created the, what was called the Container Runtime Interface. And it was an API to allow the Kubernetes to basically call into a container engine and say, you know, I need to pull down this container image or I need to start this, this container or this pod. Then they wanted other people to build their daemons that would answer the CRI interface. Cryo started from within the container runtime team at Red Hat, and it was like an idea that, hey, we have contributed a lot to Docker. We have contributed all these uh, storage backends. We worked on the Scopio project, which is uh, which is basically for viewing manifest and additional data uh, about containers from registries. And we have invested so much time in Runcy. I'm a Runcy maintainer, and a lot of folks from uh, the team had also contributed to Runcy. So we have all this expertise, and we feel that we can make a runtime for Kubernetes that is smaller than Docker and easier to maintain for us. So then we just started throwing together a, a daemon that would answer the CRI and would use containers image to pull down images to the system, store them on disk as container storage. We were hacking away and building on it. And then we got an initial POC working, which was all great. The last thing I remember was uh, the attach, which was a bit complicated. And I remember like uh, excitedly working on it on Memorial Day weekend and sharing with the team that, hey, yes, I finally got it working. Simultaneous with all this happening, all the companies that were working on containers got together and said, let's, let's standardize this. That created the OCI, Open Container Initiative. We had the CRI from Kubernetes Runtime Interface and the O, standard for OCI images. So we built a daemon that would pull images from container registries to the host, store them in container storage, and then create the OCI runtime specification, and then finally launch a runtime. And that thing was called Cryo. So right from the beginning, Cryo has been uh, welcome to new ideas. What we found is that other, other companies started to contribute new and better ways of running containers. For instance, a, a lot of the Carter efforts uh, to run containers inside a uh, virtualization started to arise. We saw lots and lots of interaction at different levels of stack. I'm a huge supporter of open source development strategy, and I think that's really what makes this project really, really successful. So I went to Linux uh, Plumbers Conference back in 2015 to give a talk on Runcy, and I ran into Samuel Ortiz from Intel, and they were also interested in doing a CRI runtime. And we got talking and realized that it would be a good idea for Intel to instead contribute that support to Cryo. So that's how like Kata runtime support was added to Cryo, and eventually it made its way up to Kubernetes as a first-class feature. So we were uh, excited to have outside contributors uh, contributing as well. Alexa from Suzy, Mike Brown from IBM. More recent examples is uh, support for Wasm, Sixtor. So these are all features that we try out, test in Cryo, and then make a case for adding to Kubernetes.
I think the container runtime is a great way to start contributing to Kubernetes because you get to know to how everything works from a very low level. So if you come from Linux and are interested in the low level bits, then this is a great opportunity to start finding out how Kubernetes works under the hood. And it also provides you a great opportunity to understand how, how those systems scale and how to move on if you want to contribute to other components of Kubernetes, like the kubelet and the API and everything stacks on top of that. And this is, this is really great from my point of view. I think of other big wins is when outside users, like say Lyft tells us, hey, guys, we've been using Cryo. It's been working well for us, by the way. And can you help us with these features? It's amazing. Like we realized we had many of these users that would just come out of the woodworks and tell us that they've been using Cryo and they've been quiet because it's just been working for them. They haven't hit any issues. So we had to re reach out to these users to get their feedback and learn about their journey in using Cryo. So Cryo is graduating within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, which is a huge step for the project, sealing in kind of the point of community collaboration in the ecosystem. And uh, something that I've really enjoyed is ramping up the community collaboration between us and, you know, our sibling project, uh, ContainerD. So, you know, we occupy the same spot in the stack and there's definitely ha could be opportunity for us to, you know, gridlock the ecosystem and not work together at all. But instead, what we've ended up doing in the last couple of years is you're know, doing a lot of work together and, you know, trying to improve, you know, whenever there needs to be a CRI change in the kubelet, both projects are there talking about it and, you know, figuring out how to make that work with their specific architectures. So. While we are, you know, competing because, you know, we're both two projects occupying the same level of the stack, we're also collaborating a lot. I think there are also many users of Cryo who are not that much into open source contribution, like we are We are at Red Hat, for example. And the, the thing is that many there are many users of open source software where you don't get the actual feedback. And I think the graduation in the CNCF gives the, the project more visibility that we have actually get more feedback from the community. Mm -hmm.